Rey Mysterio was injured on SmackDown and the match was cancelled. LA Knight's SummerSlam status has been confirmed and has the Elite's choice between AEW and WWE possibly been revealed? Stay tuned for the news. During last night's SmackDown, we saw the final of the United States Championship Invitational match. Now, it was Santos Escobar taking on his LWO stablemate, Rey Mysterio. They would then go on to, the winner would go on to face Austin Theory for the United States Championship. I believe it's going to be next week. They've not actually, I don't think mm. they've given us a confirmed date as to when that match is going to happen. The it finals. could be next week. Could it be could next be week. SummerSlam. Could be SummerSlam. <laughs> right now, it feels like it's more of a SmackDown kind of thing. Yeah. But before the show, we saw a little backstage thing between Santos and Rey. Santos had got my brand new mask that was a combination of the El Fantasma uh, mask and the Rey Mysterio mask. And it, it was a really nice sort of heartfelt moment between yeah, the two Yeah, it's a good them. gesture. Exactly. So you're going into this match thinking this is going to be a great match. This is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see Santos Escobar versus Rey Mysterio. Well, the match got cancelled halfway through due to a rather unfortunate injury, and it seems to be that some people, th at first it looked a little bit storyline. Yeah. But it has been confirmed it is since it's since been confirmed that it is legitimate. Rey Mysterio at one point was on the outside. Santos Escobar went to do a tope through the ropes, dive to the outside. Rey caught him. Yeah, so it was on ramp side. Yeah. Um, and you know the ramp has that little lip, like the little metal lip. It's where it bridges between the, 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 the yeah, metal the, ramp and the, and the arena soft floor. arena or soft. The soft. padded, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not soft, that's for sure. Um, but Rey's head, yeah, he sort of caught him. Fell back, mm. almost like there was no... Well, when you're watching in full speed, you can't really see anything. It, it looks like Ray just catches him, uh, yep. and then from that point on, it, it gets a bit off the rails, which is why I think a lot of people were maybe like, oh, storyline combined with, you know, the referee very openly leaving the ring, going over to timekeeping mm. area and being like, Ray Mysterio can no longer Cannot compete. compete. Call the match off. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that they also replayed it. They yeah. replayed it numerous times, uh, which is something for a legitimate injury, they don't really do. They also kept the camera on Ray as, yeah. the, as the trainer was, was attending to him. But unfortunately, as Sam said there, the ref went over to, to ringside and went, look, the match cannot go on. Rey Mysterio cannot compete. Santos Escobar has been ruled the winner. Uh, a follow-up after the show from Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful has revealed that Mysterio's injury was not storyline as originally suggested. Uh, and Santos Escobar was scheduled to go over clean. And uh, there was to be a backstage follow-up, which was since uh, cancelled because Rey then couldn't yeah, be involved I mean, in it. Rey looked gutted as well at the end. Uh, you, both him and Santos kind of touched their heads yep. together and uh, just kind of shared a couple of words in the ring, I think. But it was uh, it's just one of those unfortunate things just one of those really unfortunate things that can happen yeah and it's not it's not like it was anyone's fault this one yeah. it's not like th there was a, a miscommunication it was legitimately yeah. just him falling on what would be a routine like routine portion bump. of a match and yeah. it was also a routine bump like he knew Ray's yeah. done that so many times throughout his career but hopefully this doesn't keep him out of the ring for too long no hopefully it's something minor you know uh, obviously there'll probably have been concussion protocol performed yeah. and everything so you know they're, they're really hot on that right now so so maybe that might be might mean that Rey Mysterio isn't on SummerSlam but do you know who is going to be on SummerSlam who? Sam SummerSlam Just Sam that me. was good it's going to be LA Knight <laughs> yeah I don't think there's any surprises there there's no surprise I think if he wasn't on the card people would riot there would be yeah there would be riots I still think folk are going to go is that the right place for him yeah. Yeah, because I did that. <laughs> I, yeah, as did I. Uh, during last night's SmackDown, it was announced that there would be a Battle Royal match uh, taking place at SummerSlam. And then following the announcement, backstage, Ellie Knight was seen chatting with Adam Pearce. Mm. And he goes, "It's you can't have a SummerSlam Battle Royal without the megastar. LA Knight's got to be in there. Yeah, if you want the match to be a big deal, it needs to have LA Knight. Exactly. Uh, and, it, it, and then Sheamus interrupted him was like, you, your catchphrases and your promos, son, ain't going to get you anywhere. I'm, I'm, you, need, you need more than that to win the Battle Royal. Yep. And then Sheamus is in the Battle Royal as well. So but he's not only that, though. Not only that. What's no, happening next cause week? Because they're, they're, they're so back and forth in this segment that Pierce then announced next week they will be facing off on SmackDown. So yeah, we've got a little bit of a lead in there. Got a which, match. you know, maybe will lead to something spicy and then maybe it, it goes beyond a Battle Royal appearance? Maybe? Hopefully. That's the or thing. it can not? lead to some insanity mid-Battle Royal. Yeah, that's more you likely. Know, where if they take each other out or something and then that turns into a feud, Sheamus, LA Knight has got legs. I'd watch that. A lot of potential for that yeah. one. And they seem to be really packing the pre-premium live event Smackdowns yeah. and making sure that they are must-see as well. So maybe this is yeah, their way of doing it. It's good to see, finally, after such a long time. I know, we're saying that like... 
good on them. But no, yeah. it, that's a go home like, show. <laughs> yeah, they should be doing that. But it's and it's, it's exciting to see coming up for SummerSlam. Yeah. We'll see that match. Maybe see a little shenanigans in the Battle Royal. But I'm going to keep an eye on that one. But staying with SmackDown and uh, and and some basically. We've, we've got another tease of this new Hurt Business thing. Yes. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, so obviously we had Bobby Lashley approach the Street Profits, I believe last week or the week before backstage. Yep. Um, and it was just one of those throwaway little moments where he kind of he probably pulled up in a fancy car cool and he was car. like, get in. Uh, and then this week, uh, Street Profits were backstage with Bobby Lashley. They were enjoying some red wine. They were sitting on some lovely, comfy looking nice, chairs. Yeah, nice chair. It was a very nice little set they had for it. Uh, but they were sort of just sitting around. You had uh, Montez Ford and Lashley dressed in, you know, fairly Very smart nice clothes, like nice smart, casual, smart clothes, like smart casual, uh, smart clothes. Smart casual. But then uh, you you had um, Dawkins on the end, uh, just kind of in his normal sweatpants and everything. Uh, Lashley kind of, he addresses the fact that, you know, you start need to start dressing like stars. Uh, <laughs> they turn to Dawkins and he's like, what, me? Uh, but then Lashley kind of, he just sort of waves his hand and he's like, so I got you something. And in comes this rack full of suits. So this is just leading further and further into the fact yeah that, i mean i want to see this so bad it's so exciting. badly I, to be to be clear dawkins has some very nice sweat oh yeah you know, you know his sweatpants <laughs> and his, his track suits they're really cool it's not like he's in primark specials or anything no not the greg's yeah. ones he's in, he's in like gucci and stuff like yeah. that but it, <laughs> what was interesting was bobby lashley at the start of the thing was like i was speaking to trick and mellow and yeah. he says you guys are stars so we've got them being mentioned now. It's very, it's very exciting. I we just, just want to keep. It I, I want to see. I think this could add such a, a new dimension to the street proper to I mean, obviously, I'd watch them any day of the week. Anyway, yeah. they don't really need, and you don't need to put them in storylines. I'll watch the street profits, but I think giving them something here where we're going to see a whole new dynamic, mm -hmm. um, seeing them as maybe part of a bigger whole, uh, and you know, working a, a more aggressive, maybe a slightly more healy just style. to freshen them up yeah. a little bit. But I think yeah. they'll still be beloved, even if the oh god, yeah, people will still cheer them yeah. even if they're. If they're <laughs> <laughs> if they're heels. How can but, you not? Yeah, but yeah. moving over to AEW just now, uh, we've got an update on the contract of Jim Ross. According mm. to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Jim Ross's AEW contract is set to expire in two months' time. Uh, Jim Ross has been away from TV dealing with personal health issues, uh, and he's personally hoped to be back on TV for Wembley, trying to get back in for All In, but uh, yeah. there is currently no date on his return uh, but the Wrestling Observer notes that it would likely take place on AW Collision. It seems like their commentary team is a little bit more flexible right now yeah. because you've got Kevin Kelly in, in Japan for the G1 Climax. Mm. Ian Riccoboni's on there just now. But having Jim Ross in the mix when they when he you know when he's back to full health is a good thing. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of people have a lot to say about Jim Ross, but at the end of the day, he's Jim Ross. So for me, it's one of those things where, hey, you might get a name wrong here and there. Yep. You know, he might he might not, you know, deliver things in the way you'd like them to be delivered from time to time, but it's Jim Ross. It's Jim the Ross. guy is like a, a well of knowledge and, you know, he's got to be doing so much more there than just commentary. Not yep. to take away from his commentary, obviously, because it, it's, it's world class, yeah. but like, um, you know, he, he's going to be this, this fountain of knowledge for surely every Everybody in and around him in the commentary positions and beyond. So I, I think it's very much something we we may see Jim Ross re-sign with the company. And yeah, if he can return in a more flexible position, uh, you know, where maybe he can do a couple of weeks and then he's got to take yeah. some more time and a couple of weeks and he's got to take some more time. I'm fine with that as well. I like the idea of bringing him in for like some of the bigger matches yeah. just to make it feel a bit more important. I mean, like, well, that's it. His Jim voice Ross always here. lends that quality to it, doesn't it? Right. The big moments. Yeah. Having Jim Ross say something that is that is like video package worthy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's right there. Um, so we will keep an eye on that one. I think, I imagine he will resign, but the reports there are saying that he's, he's still got two months out. Yeah. Uh, but we're ending on some more resigning. Will they, won't they, back and forth? Because it's it's coming up to when the Elite's contracts are, are done with AEW. You yeah, know, their future... Been is the big talk. There's point. been a lot of speculation that WWE were going to make some massive, massive overtures toward them because, I mean, mm. it, and a lot of people pondering how could you have all elite wrestling without the elite? You know, it, it's been one of those kind of uh, rumor trains that hasn't stopped picking up speed. Pretty much. And we've got a little update from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter and they're saying that the belief is that the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega and Adam Page are staying with AEW. Meltzer went on to say, we do know from a WWE standpoint that months ago they had the impression that they had had a good shot in with Omega uh, in 2024. Um, and he was the most coveted of all the guys being talked about. Uh, that has gone cold, so they believe he is staying with AEW. Obviously, that is from a WWE point of view. Yeah. We've not got an update on if they have signed new contracts. We've not got any update on that front. But WWE 
feel like it's a closed door. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I always kind of saw it and Cody sort of busted that wide open, but it was like, you know, being an EVP, surely you, you have more of a kind of a, a desire to stick with the brand that you're, yep. you're associated with, that you're doing more than just wrestling in as well. Obviously, he works in the with the games division. He kind of does a lot behind the scenes in the company, as well as being a, an on-screen star. Yeah. So I, I think that it might be one of those things where if you want many hats and you're kind of happy doing that, then it, it's some way you're going to stay, right? It's also got to be the biggest risk of their career if they do move over to the WWE. Yeah, because what if it doesn't work? If it doesn't work, Cody Rhodes at least had the history of the company being in WWE, whereas the Elite, yeah. they're going into uncharted territories if they go to WWE. I mean, there's a lot of dream matches, but it, does it go beyond that? Right, and I, I think we'll. Yeah. I think we'll see the elite stay in all elite wrestling. I think so, and I think that's maybe the best pay, place you know, for them. Never say never, though. I, I, you know, there's any number of things could happen if WWE all of a sudden start becoming this very open business. You right? know, they could start yeah. joining on all the cross promotional fun. I don't see that happening, uh, but you know, down the line, the, there's nothing stopping maybe a one-off match here or there. Yeah, um, contractual sort of obligations well, maybe, well, maybe depending. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. Fingers crossed. Yeah, just, but we are. In the meantime, you can get on. You know, two K or or fight forever, fight forever and just, just do it yourself. Just have some fun. Well, yeah. we are a week out from SummerSlam, Sam, and I uh, had a look at one of the worst SummerSlams ever. You did. This coming, what this next week's one, is meant it, look, it looks quite good, but yeah. I, I sat down and I, I discussed SummerSlam 1996. That will be it's on a, the channel It's a doozy tomorrow. of a show. It is, but I also feel like there's some good bits, but you'll have to yeah. find out what they are in the video <laughs> tomorrow at uh, at some point. It'll go up on the channel, but you can watch it right now on patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. It's up there Ooh, for early that. access. Early. Get it now. Early. Go watch it now and come back and watch the next news video. We'll see you then.